Our first example problem is uh, a projectile launched horizontally. So here we have a stone is thrown horizontally at 15 meters per second from the top of a cliff 44 meters high. Uh, how far from the base of the cliff does the stone hit the ground? And how fast is it moving the instant before it hits the ground? So if you're watching this on YouTube or something right now, pause the video and try to work the problem before I do. Now. Okay, Ho hope it went well. All right, so here's how I want you to approach these problems. First of all, write down what's given. And draw a picture of it. Here we've got a cliff. By the way, there will be a there will be a cliff problem just like this on the exam next week. This is 44 meters from here to here. Now this is delta y. And oh, I'm off screen here. So delta y is negative 44 meters. That is the stone is going to fall down. Now here's the stone, it's, here's it's the initial velocity in it, like this, and here's the stone just before it hits the ground, like that. Okay, and let me zoom out a little bit. So, um, I think, oh, we know that the initial velocity here in the x direction is 15 meters per second. But what's not directly stated, but you have to understand in order to solve this problem, is that what is its initial velocity in the y direction? Is zero. So now when you look at a problem and they give you an initial velocity, make sure that you break it up into its x component and its y component. In this case, there is no y component, so the problem is a little bit easier to solve. Now, so what are we trying to find? Well, for part A, we want to know how far from the base of the cliff does the stone hit the ground? That's delta x. We want to know delta x. And for part B, how fast is it moving the instant before it hits the ground? So we want to know the final velocity overall. So let's solve it. Well, let's start off with what we're trying to find. We're trying to find delta x. Now, we do have a new kinematic equation for delta x. And that's right here. Delta x equals v naught x times t. Now, we know what v naught x is. That's given. But we don't know the time. And so we're going to need to find the time by using the y direction. So I look at the problem in the y direction. And what do I know? Well, I know delta y. I know v naught y. I know what the acceleration in the y direction is, right? What is the acceleration in the y direction? Negative it, it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's known. I didn't put it in here, but it's kind of implied. It's projectile motion. And I'm trying to find time. Now, I don't know the final velocity, and I'm not trying to find it. So I'm going to use the third kinematic equation. And by the way, it's usually the third kinematic equation that we use. So there's our third kinematic equation we're going to use to solve for time. Now, happily, v naught y times t is what? Zero. So this gives me delta y equals 1 half at squared. So what can I solve for? 
I can say t is equal, well, multiply both sides by 2, 2 times delta y, and divide by a, the acceleration. And then to get t, if I had t squared, so what do I do? Take the square root of both sides. Now I did all the algebra at one in one step. So, you know, if you need to take more steps, go for it. Equals, well, 2 times 44 meters over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Yeah, the 44 is negative. Yeah, in fact, what I'm, what I, what I did uh, here is deliberately I left off the negative to show you the most common mistake that students make. If you get a radical like this, and and you notice, wait a minute, I got a negative number inside there. I can't take the square root of a negative number. You're right. You can't take the square root of a negative number. There are no imaginary numbers in this class. It probably means that you left a negative off accidentally. And you would say, oh, wait, this 44 meters right here is negative. And so what does that do to the acceleration here? I mean, the negative on the acceleration, they cancel out. And so when you plug all that into your calculator, you get 3.0 seconds. Now I know what the time is, and now I can solve for delta x. So delta x is equal to 15 meters per second times 3.0 seconds. And so that will give me um, an answer for delta x of 45 meters. So now we know how far away the rock will be when it lands, when it hits the ground. That's my answer for part A. Now, part B is a little bit tricky. But let's go back and look at our picture. Here's my final velocity. But notice my final velocity has an X component and a y component. So now what we did previously is we always broke up our forces into their x and y components. But now we have to break up our velocities into their x and y components. Vx, Vy. It's the final velocity in the x direction, final velocity in the y direction. And I think you can see that if I know these two, I can figure out what this is using Pythagorean theorem. Well, let's figure out what Vx is. What's our equation for Vx? Ah, Vx just is just equal to V0x. In other words, the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. So Vx is just equal to 15 meters per second. This velocity doesn't change in the x direction. OK, I didn't draw it very well here. This is a lot shorter than this, but. Now, what's the final velocity in the y direction? Well, now, there's, there's several ways of doing this. Um, what if, um, I, I could use the first kinematic equation. That would be the easiest, wouldn't it? V equals V naught y plus a times t. And uh, this is 0. And this is negative 9.8 meters per second times 3 seconds. And uh, uh, what is that? That's uh, 39.4. Is that right? What it, or what is it? 29.4? Yeah, 29.4, of course. So Vy equals negative 29.4 meters per second. Oh, I'm just about off screen. So now that I know Vx and Vy, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So V is equal to the square root of the x component. 
squared plus the y component squared. 15 meters per second squared plus, and I, I don't need to include the negative on there because it gets squared, right? So 29.4 meters per second squared. And somebody with a calculator, um, why don't you give that to me? Um, well, let's see. I think it uh, it rounds off if you round it off to three significant figures, we get thirty three. I mean, that's what it says in the book. I'm assuming that's right. And that's my answer. It asked for the final speed. It didn't ask for the direction. Uh, it just asked me for, for the final speed of the rock. Now, but what if, what if I made a mistake on my time? I don't want to use time. I don't want to use three seconds to figure this out. Because what if I made a mistake in figuring out time? Now I'm going to carry my mistake forward. Let's use the fourth kinematic equation. Okay, to figure out, see, Vy is equal to the square root. Well, actually, hold on. Let's do this right. Vy squared equals V naught Y squared plus 2A delta Y. Well, v naught y is 0, so v y is equal to the square root of 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times delta y, which is negative 44 meters. You need this negative to cancel that negative. And when you do that, you're going to get um, the same answer. And you can check it. Um, it's going to be 29.4. Now here's a problem. Though I want you to see this. Let me zoom out. These aren't exactly the same, are they? When I use the time to get the final velocity in the y direction, I got negative 29.4. <clears throat> but when I use the fourth kinematic equation, I get positive 29.4 meters per second. There's no, that's not the same. Why did this happen? Well, I'll tell you. Remember, we took to get v naught y, we took the square root of both sides, didn't we? When we do that, what happens when you take the square root of something squared? The answer is plus or minus our, you know, our, our thing. So really, v not y can be plus or minus. In other words, we lose a little bit of information. Um, here's, an, here's a simple answer. This, uh, the square root of what number equals 2? Um, well, oh, I'm sorry. The square root of, of x squared equals 2. What's What are the answers for x? What can x be? Well, let's use 2, right? What is 2 squared? 4 times it's the square root of 4 is 2. But what, what's the other one? Negative 2, right? So in other words, negative 2 squared is 4. You take the square root of that, you get 2. So in other words, the answer here, x, is equal to plus or minus 2, or positive or negative 2. You don't really know. Now, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're taking the square root of something squared. So our answer is going to be plus or minus. So what you have to do is be smart enough to, to if, when you use this fourth kinematic equation 
to say, should it be plus or should it be minus? I mean, positive or negative? Well, I look at my picture. What direction is the rock falling? It's falling down. You throw a rock off a cliff, it's fine a velocity in the y direction. It's not going to be up. It's going to be down. So you need to put a negative in here. Now, why do you need to know that? Well, because one thing I'm going to ask you to do is to solve for the angle here, angle of theta. What is the angle that, at, at which it plows into the ground? Now, the, the book in the example problem doesn't ask for that, but I'm going to on the test. So you just have to use the inverse tangent of the y value, in this case, negative 29.4 meters per second divided by the x component of the velocity 15 meters per second and when you do that let's see um, turn it on take the inverse tangent of negative 29.4 divided by 15 we get negative 63 degrees. Negative 63 degrees. Doesn't that make sense? This is going to be negative 63 degrees. And that's it.